So, David, when were you first diagnosed with Parkinson's disease? Thirteen years ago. Uh, what was your initial reaction? Shock. I mean, I've been pretty healthy most of my life. And uh, to have a diagnosis of Parkinson's, um, you, have to, you don't know anything about it. You just know that you don't want it. Actually, I was pretty relieved because I had a lot of symptoms. I didn't know what was happening with me. And to have a name for it and um, know that it was all caused by something that it wasn't in my, my imagination. Come back to neutral. Sit in the chair. Reach forward with your right arm and then bring it back to neutral. Get up from the chair. I had a balance problem. That was the thing that was the worst because um, we didn't know why I had a balance problem and they were treating me for an inner ear problem. When it turns out, if you put all the, uh, um, if you put it all together, it was Parkinson's. I was dumbfounded. I, I just couldn't understand why I had Parkinson's because it's, you'd say it's so rare. But I, I just wondered, why me, you know? I went to the doctor just for a regular checkup, and she recognized my tremors and wanted to, you know, check into it. Right. And she said, you know, I thought it was nerves, really. And she told me it was pockets, run kisses, and told me it was pockets. Help that and at the same time give me a little longer in life. Uh, and it sounds like we've got a good mixture here this morning and I'm happy to be here. I have a really, really, really onset Parkinson's also. I think it was diagnosed when I was 30. Uh, I had it for a couple of years before that, but didn't, didn't know what to call it. I had also had deep brain surgery about six years ago, which helped me quite a bit. A 40 pound orange dog. <laughs> <laughs> three, three kids, all in college. All, all tuition finished paying for. Yay, congratulations. Well, I'm Glenda, everybody knows me, and I'm, I, I am known as Glenda, not Dr. Batson or whatever. I think Christina and I, and, and this Sally too, uh, we believe in the transformative power of dance, or this wouldn't be happening. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it's like we've seen amazing things happen and people surprise themselves in ways they never knew were possible for them. And I, I think that that's um, what makes um, it all just an incredible journey for, for everyone. So um, I'm, I'm real enthused that you're uh, all here. What's exciting about this study versus our first, which took place in 2010, um, this study again really looks at improvisational dance and that kind of cueing as opposed to a more um, mimetic, follow the teacher, try and look like me approach, which we were really trying to avoid. Idea that has to do with opposites. Oppos well, opposites, uh, okay? So for instance, one opposite could be I move with the back side of my hand 
that lead, and then I move with the front side of my hand, that lead. Another opposite idea could be I go high or up in space, and then I do the opposite, which is go low in space. Another Other exercises happened at the ballet bar, so we could really take some risks with movement on one leg as opposed to two. And then finally, other exercises moved locomotively across the floor, so really some more fuller body dancing. Again, always uh, prompted with improvisational ideas. Oftentimes, dance is a subject and a means of communication that is difficult at times to quantify. And so, with the help um, from CDI, with the high motion capture analysis, I mean, we're able to really assert in a scientific community that this is valid, that this belongs in science. Motion capture can work in a, in a number of ways, but one of the most well-established dominant methods is to use a system of cameras. Filming the same action from these different angles and recording that, um, we use these images from the cameras to extract the movement. And uh, for practical purposes, it's a lot easier if we put markers, which are nothing more than these little tiny reflective balls at different key locations on, on the human body. As the person moves, these markers move with them. Then we use these videos to extract uh, the motion afterwards. The student digitizers, that's what they're, they're called, they have one of the most important jobs along the entire chain of, you know, of work is because they're putting that video image into essentially 3D uh, XYZ coordinate points. Then we would be able to animate that exactly like the human patient was moving, but we can now rotate it in every direction. But that also allows us to, you know, look at things like range of motion and speed and angles that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do just looking at the video frame by frame. There's an element of data visualization that um, the center here is um, uh, becoming well known for in developing uh, novel expression modalities for that. So rather than expressing this relatively complicated multi-dimensional information as a series of charts or bar graphs or line graphs, we invoke uh, quantitative 3D modeling, we create um, digital avatars of the subject that were uh, participating in the study. And we can use the power of the three-dimensional environment in the computer to do um, very neat comparisons, visual comparisons that are still informed meaningfully by the numerical information behind it, but uh, is a lot easier to interpret that information just at a quick glance. I think the scientific visualizations allow us to reach a broader audience that doesn't need to be an expert in this field, uh, otherwise without it, understanding some of the tables and you know, if we just showed them an Excel spreadsheet, a regular person, they wouldn't be able to understand that necessarily without a lot of explanation. But if you show side by side uh, of the visualization, they're going to qualitatively see differences, but then we can also, um, you know, actually highlight some of the quantitative differences in a much more digestible format. What people don't often realize is that a technology needs a story to tell, and without it, it's just a bunch of gizmos, uh, you know, laying around. I feel like I have have experienced some improvement in my balance. With all the I call it exercise that we were doing, it helped really did help me. Good. It really did help me. Good. I'm not sure why I participated in this. It just seemed like it might be might be good.
and more of a movement, movement dance, dance movement. Uh, it's half social and half uh, physical, just stretching my myself around a little bit and uh, the social, getting to know some of the other characters are in the class. I think just the inter interaction and reaction with the classmates was just a good continual group. I met some wonderful people in this program. This is this is a real crew. I'm very proud of them. I'm proud of myself.